practice and today I'm working on a heat shield using this bubble pack reflective material for the pantry door right back here. Uh, on the other side of this door it is about 45-50 degrees. I've been able to get the pantry down to that temperature because I've got some small uh, basement windows up in the back and I opened up one of them up just a couple of inches over in the corner over here and that has allowed us to have kind of free air conditioning, free cooling in that room. Now, if you recall from the construction period, we've got four inches of foam on this wall here. On the ceiling, I've got two inches of foam. Technically, that's supposed to be four inches of foam per the uh, you know, energy audit people, but uh, I'm hoping they're not going to pull out a tape measure and measure that. Uh, you know, two inches seems to be fine. The floor upstairs, it does get a little bit cool. You know, four inches would probably be you know, better, but it'd be kind of awkward to get it in there, and it's really not that, that huge of a deal. We've got great access to heat energy here. Uh, you know, I'm able to keep that place cool, so I, you know, everything's working fine. Could you always make it better? Yeah, you could make it better, but everything's working out really nicely. This wall doesn't feel cool at all, um, but one of the uh, kind of uh, weak points of it is, like I said, the door. Uh, the door is, uh, you know, not insulated at the moment. It's just, uh, you know, I think it's like an inch and a half uh, pine. <coughs> oh, sorry. And uh, it's right next to the wood stove here. Uh, so obviously the, you know, that door gets a lot of heat. Whenever you're laying a house out, there's always uh, different things that kind of have their own sort of sense of what they want. Like a refrigerator doesn't want to be right next to an oven. We have them kind of diagonally across each other in the kitchen. I tried to kind of get them uh, you know, away from each other as best I could. Uh, the refrigerator at this point, it's kind of closer to the wood stove than I would really ideally like it. Uh, long term, what I plan on doing is I'm going to be building a little cupboard here, like some shelves, you know, for like cookbooks and things, and that will act as kind of a heat shield out to here, and that will that will get most of the uh, you know radiated heat from the wood stove, you know, not uh, hitting the refrigerator. But there's always kind of a um, you know a push and a pull when you're trying to lay things out. You know, there's things you want to be close together for convenience, like I want to have the uh, wood stove near the kitchen for working, I also want to have the pantry near the kitchen for working. So there's always kind of trade-offs working back and forth, but overall things are working out really well. But once I get this, uh, this heat shield up on the door, I think it's going to work even better. Now, the best place to put this heat shield functionally would be on this outside surface, because it's, uh, it works, it's got a little bit of a uh, insulated bubble pack kind of layer, but mostly it's a radiant heat, uh, a radiating heat kind of shield, where that infrared uh, heat that's coming out is going to get reflected off of this. So the absolute best place to put it will be on this side, but since that would be absolutely hideous, I'm not going to do that, and we're going to put it on the, uh, the inside of the door over there. I've measured it off, and in order to have just a little bit of overhang, which will act as kind of like a seal, like a gasket around the edge, not, not like a you know totally airtight gasket or anything, but you know a little bit more of an air baffle. Uh, it needs to be 32 inches wide by 81 and a half inches high. And I've got it laid out uh, right here. Uh, it's always difficult to lay out a perfect square rectangle when you're you know, working at large sizes. Uh, you can use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, you know, a squared is one length, b, uh, b is the other length, and c is the hypotenuse between them. You can kind of work that out. What I ended up doing on this is just kind of eyeballing it, doing the best that I could. And then what I did is I measured the hypotenuse between uh, the opposing corners on it. Um, if you have a rectangle, that kind of cross distance should be equal from this direction and from this direction. And as I measured it out, I'm within like an eighth of an inch or so. So that's good enough for me. If uh, your, your shape is kind of twisted into a parallelogram kind of shape, you know, one of those dimensions is going to be, uh, you know, not equal. So that's kind of a quick and easy way to do it. Like get it laid out and then you can just do an idiot check and make sure that your hypotenuse is, you know, pretty, you know, as close as you deem necessary for whatever project you're working on. So I'm going to cut this thing out and I'm going to put it up on the back of the door. I think I'm going to use some... Uh, some strips of wood with some screws uh, in it to kind of hold it on. I think those have some kind of a special construction name, batten and something or other uh, for that. Uh, but uh, you can tell me in the comments below if you know what that is. Uh, but I, I'm going to uh, use that to kind of hold the th whole thing down. And I think it'll make a huge deal of dis uh, difference. The, like I said, the pantry's been working really, really great. But every kind of extra layer that you can add to it will make you know, more of our heat that we want in the rest of the house stay in the house and less of it going into the pantry. That's it. Thanks for watching.